Hey everybody, welcome. All right, so today I am doing, I'm making my submission video for the Needle Grooves 300 sub contest. Uh, before I get into it, congrats. 300 is awesome, and I'm sure you probably have 500, and they're all you. It's well deserved. Amazing channel. Every time I check out the updates uh, that you put up, I'm always like finding, you know other artists. I'm writing down the names of the albums and stuff so I can listen to them. Um, so keep it up. You'll get to a million in no time. <laughs> um, I hope I'm not too late too with my submission. You did this last month and you extended it a little bit but um, been so busy and it took me forever to figure out what albums I would want to put on my list so I finally figured it out. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel do him a favor, no, do yourself a favor, not him, do yourself a favor and sign up because like I said, tons of albums, great channel, and he has a clothing line with amazing like apparel for all you vinyl junkies out there. Um, in fact, the, the winner of the contest is going to get this really rad fucking t-shirt. Um, he took the sound waves of like the actual track of an album or whatever, uh, I think it's D'Angelo's new album, the th I think he mentioned the third track. Uh, and he made a look at the grooves on the record. So it's like a record, but the sound waves are the grooves. Never seen anything like that before. So, really cool. Um, check that out. So, anyways, um, 10 albums that I would want to have on a desert island. And I put these in alphabetical order, because if I put them in rank or whatever, I'd probably kill myself. And also, I assume that there's a record player provided uh, on this desert island. Um, if not, you know, it would actually, that would suck. Uh, if I took 10 of my favorite LPs and make the, you know, survive the crash or whatever, and uh, I don't have anything to play them on. So, being the guy that I am, I'd probably like MacGyver myself a turntable with like a coconut and some wreckage of the plane. <laughs> and it would probably still sound a whole lot better than a Crosley. Just saying. So, anyways, um, First album, so it, this video isn't fucking forever long. Um, Aloe Black's Good Things. There it is. Soul album released through Stone's Throw. Um, the Stone Throw. Why am I having. Stone's Throw label. Fuck. First um, exposure to him was through his hip hop group that he was doing with Exile called Eminon. This is back in the time when I was just. Barely getting into hip hop, I had been exposed to some of it, and here I thought it was fucking cool. Like, oh yeah, I know about underground hip hop. And then I met my buddy Eric. Shout out to Eric. He just dumped a bunch of like records on me, um, stuff that I never would have found out, found myself on on my own. Uh, so one of those artists groups was Eminem, and so I loved it. And when I heard that Alo was doing this soul album, I had to pick it up. So I, I got it digitally, and then after it grew on me, and I loved it even more, I found it on vinyl for an awesome price, and so now it's in my collection. Um, you got the single, I Need a Dollar, Femme Fatale. Uh, you have Good Things, Hey Brother, um, I think, what's it called here? Loving You Is Killing Me, which is an amazing song. Um, I always forget the, the way it, uh, anyways. So... Yeah, just awesome. Uh, this next album, I don't own. I don't know if that's cheating, but I have it digitally. And if I was to be stuck on this hypothetical island with my coconut record player, I would own this record. <laughs> um, it's the Black Lips. Um, good, good, bad, not evil. My buddy Rafa. Shout out to Rafa. This is going to be a shout out video to all my friends because they influence me a lot. You know, they... Just always turn me on to new music. Um, he also dumped a bunch of music, but this time he put it all on my iPod. And in that dumpage was the Black Lips. Um, I was listening to my iPod on shuffle, and then Oh Katrina comes on, which I think is like the second, third, maybe fourth track on the album. Anyways, um, and I was just blown away by it. I thought that was such a cool song. So I get out of shuffle, go straight to the Black Lips, and I started listening to every single album he put on there. And I had like a Black Lips binge listening session going on for like a month. And I keep coming back to this album. It just has this certain energy, certain vibe to it. 
Um, they have this garage rock punk sound to them that's kind of lo-fi, you know? Yeah. If you haven't listened to the Black Lips, check them out. Phenomenal music. Um, this next album is another album that I don't own, but I do have some other LPs. Um, it's The Cramps. Now, I picked um, Off the Bone because that was my first exposure to The Cramps. That's kind of when I started getting into like punk rock and hardcore stuff. Um, though the, the though the cramps to me would just be the cramps. Like they're 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 in the league of their own. Um, they've been credited as being like the pioneers of psychobilly music, and it's just really fucking awesome music. It's badass. Um, you got songs on there like I Was a Teenage Werewolf, um, Blue Moon Baby. Uh, they, they covered Fever, which is really awesome. Lux Interior was a great singer and great frontman. Just overall amazing. And I was really bummed when he passed away. Never got to see them live. Still pissed off about that. But um, hopefully one day I'll find a couple more albums. I have a couple already. Some singles. But I would definitely need to have at least that. If it was ever pressed on vinyl. I'm not even sure. Uh, it was the first comp, so maybe. Um, anyways, definitely need that in my life on this desert island on my coconut record player <laughs> um so okay the next album is something i actually own it's um crass the feeding of the 5000 anarcho punk staple i mean punk rock album that you need to have um i actually got this from um okay so i was in downtown fullerton there's this vintage store there Owned by the guitarist of middle class, Mike, who unfortunately passed away. Um, he cancer, fucking. Anyways, um, awesome dude. Every time I'd walk in there, he always had stories to tell me, and he would throw in some of his own records. So this came out of his collection, and I just happened to walk in at the right time. One of my classes got canceled because I was going to Fullerton College, go community college. Um, and he put that out there and I picked it up and I could not believe that, you know, I was going to actually be able to own one of these, but it comes with this solid, like, poster sleeve, like I think most of the Crash Records do, um, and then that pulls out to this humongous poster, it says your country needs you, um, very politically charged album. You got songs on there like Do They Always a Living, Punk is Dead, um, They've Got a Bomb. Yeah, just a solid fucking album and really cool that I was able to get it from someone that was such a nice guy and you know, um, so there's that. Um, next album is um, something that I listened to more recently. Uh, it's the Duke Spirit. Cuts Across the Land, I believe that's their first album, like their solid first release. I had a couple EPs before that. Something that I kind of would see on my iPod and just skip over it, I would always see it and never really sit there and listen to it. And then one day, I was like, you know what, Like I'm going to listen to this. And I listened to it from beginning to end, it was on a road trip somewhere, and I was just blown away. Uh, there was a lot of effort put into the lyrics, very poetic, very beautiful. There's a lot of uh, effort put into the structure of the songs. I forgot her name, but it's fronted by this beautiful woman. Um, she kind of reminds me of um, fucking Blondie. <laughs> but anyways, she has a great voice. It's very soft, but still very powerful. It's one of those bands where I kind of sit there and think, did the lyrics come first or did the, like, the actual music? Because it kind of sounds like it could go either way. With this one, I keep going back and forth because the lyrics are so well written and so beautiful that I can't imagine the music coming afterward. Like the riffs are like so solid and just thought out. It wasn't. It didn't feel like it was just kind of put there, you know, to kind of fill in with everything. But um, yeah, just beautifully synchronized and just blend well together. Um, I'm pretty sure this is like a really shitty review of the album and me trying to explain it is probably making it even worse. So just listen to them. The Duke Spirit, they're still around. They just released a new album. I haven't listened to it yet, but start off with Cuts Across the Land. It's just awesome, alright? Um, 
Yeah, do that. And so the next thing here on my list is, now I don't own it on vinyl. I almost came close twice to getting it and someone beat me to it. Um, <laughs> ENA Day. Oh, I'm sorry. ENA, uh, ENA Abilities ENA. There we go. Um, CD. I've had this forever. I got it at Amoeba for $8.99 plus tax. Um, this album goes right to your throat. It's just, they come after you like crazy. You got Idea, Talented Lyricist, Passed Away Several Years Ago, um, Battle Rap Champion. And this guy was amazing. And you have Abilities, who is a DMC um, repeated champion. Just amazing with the turntables. And what you ha what you get is just this fucking aggressive battle rap album, ba like battle scratch album. Um, it blends so nicely together. I never thought it would be possible, and I always kind of wondered, like, man, like they need to do something like this, uh, where it's just like a DJ cutting it. That's his verse, and then you have the MC dropping his verses. Um, the only other group that does it now that I really appreciate is Dilated Peoples. Um, they do a great job of that too. But yeah, this is sort of like the first album that I listened to on my own that I discovered. I was introduced to Atmosphere by my good friend Efren. Shout out to Efren. Um, and then from there, because they are from the same scene, uh, the Minneapolis Twin City scene, uh, this popped up in the search. I got into Brother Ali as well and like Doom Tree. Um, just, ugh, this album. And so, yeah, hopefully one day I'll actually own the vinyl. And they got songs on here like Now, which I think is like his way of putting out um, his feelings about existentialism. And I didn't really appreciate it until after I was sort of, you know, um, uh, taking a philosophy class and it was all about existentialism. So, like, I hear, you know, I would listen to him and then also hear Heidegger and listen to uh, and hear uh, Nietzsche for example so fucking amazing lyricist um, okay next album uh, Jurassic 5 this is the EP one um, if I remember correctly it was just a bunch of EPs put onto this album there's like a, a first release this is on the um, Rumble label um, It, what can I say about them? I mean, if you haven't listened to J5, you don't know what I'm talking about. Listen to J5. It, it, there's magic in this album. Song after song after song that's just alone, you know, just so solid and so beautiful. Um, the next album would be Nirvana's In Utero. Don't own it. I'm slowly building up my Nirvana collection. I got like unplugged in um, the Nevermind album. Thanks to my babe. Shout out to my babe. <laughs> but um, In Utero has been something that has grown on me and something that I keep coming back to more often. The second one would be Bleach. But um, yeah, I figured if I was on a desert island, like I would really want to have that album. It's just, I think from Nevermind, it's that next level thing that he was trying to get at. I feel he kind of went back to that Bleach album where some of the songs sounded a little heavier. And... I don't know. It's like if Bleach and Nevermind had a baby, that's what that would sound like in utero, which is interesting because in utero. But um, anyways, <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Uh, <laughs> so anyways, um, tons of great songs on there um, from beginning to end. Beautiful album overall. And it's just, I think, some of his best. The next album is um, Rage Against the Machine, Battle of Los Angeles. Of Los Angeles, um, first time I actually listened to Rage and stuff like that before I got into Nirvana, and that was kind of like me working my way towards like more politically charged music. You got your uh, neo-Marxist lyrics backed up by these um, by Tom Morello's uh, amazing guitar sounds. You know, sounds like he's fucking cutting on some tables. Every track is worth listening to. Uh, it has its own signature, you know. The last one here, just to wrap it on up, is Regulations, Electric Guitar, hardcore punk band from Sweden. First song I listened to from them was Destroy, which is like, 
fucking anarchist anthem. If you haven't listened, if you're not into hardcore punk or whatever, like this actually may still be up your alley because they're not as aggressive as some bands like Negative Approach or like I don't know, SSD Control or something. Uh, they have clean sounding guitars with a bit of a distortion to them, so it sounds raw and kind of like lo-fi, but at the same time, it's just, and the drums, I mean, it just picks up the song so much. If you're not going to be, if you're not moved by this and you're not like wanting to like break shit, then I don't know. You don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It makes me want to just fucking write. So, <laughs> um, that's my list of 10 albums. Um. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for checking out the video. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Um, high five to you. And so, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.